Hello Internet, this is the High School Scientist and this is a follow-up to my previous video on Dimensional Formulae. I will be explaining coefficient of elasticity and viscosity. And by explaining I mean just giving you an idea about what they are. But I will be making videos which will give you a detailed explanation about these topics so stay tuned for that. Ok so let's start with the coefficient of elasticity. The expression of this coefficient is stress by strain. I know this doesn't really explain anything so let's take a look at them individually. Now stress is the amount of force applied per unit area. So if there is a little force applied on a very small area, then the stress experienced by the object is going to be high. But if the area on which this force is being applied is huge, then the stress will be very little. For example, if we take a piece of cloth and apply force on this part of the cloth, so the area on which the force is being applied should be taken as perpendicular to the direction of that force. Which means that the force is being distributed evenly along the top surface and hence the stress is low. But if the force were to be applied on the sides where the area is very very small, the cloth experiences a very very high stress. So the expression of stress is force per unit area. Now let's move on to strain which can be defined as the change in dimension upon original dimension. For example, if I'm applying force to a rod in this direction, the length of the rod increases. So the change in length by the original length is what we call strain. Although it has no units to compare, the ratio of deformation should give us a decent understanding about strain. Now that we know what stress and strain are, we can understand that there is a relation between stress and strain. Where if you applied more force on the object, then there will be a greater change in the dimensions of the object. And greater the force, greater the stress experienced by the object. So now it's clear that stress is directly proportional to strain. In this context, what does proportionality mean? Well, it means that if the force which is applied to change the dimensions of the object also introduces some strain to the object. And this could be of any variation. That is, a stress of 5 units on an object could result in a strain of 20 units. And if the same object experiences 12 units of strain, then the stress will be of 3 units. Because stress is proportional to strain. And the constant that determines this proportionality in this example is 4. And this is what a coefficient means. The ratio with which something increases or decreases. And the coefficient of elasticity is stress by strain. And hence we can derive the dimensional formula for coefficient of elasticity. Which is m times l to the power negative 1 multiplied by t to the power negative 2. Now let's move on to the coefficient of viscosity. This concept of viscosity is not something that can be studied overnight and certainly cannot be explained in one video. So I will be making a separate video explaining viscosity in detail. All I'm going to do now is to try and explain the basic concept of viscosity. So now you have to keep two things in mind when you learn about viscosity. That viscosity is a property unique to fluids and viscosity cannot be seen in static fluids. By which I mean that viscosity is only exhibited by flowing liquids. Now you might ask why that is. The answer is really really simple. Just think of a river. Now this river would definitely have a riverbed. Where the fluid is in contact with the surface. And this is where the fluid would experience a lot of friction. Thus moving slower when compared to the surface of the liquid. And that right there is an answer for your question. As one layer of the liquid is moving faster than the other layer, it creates frictional force between its layers. And this friction can only be created if the liquid is in motion. This force between the horizontal fluid layers is called viscous force. And this property unique to liquids is called viscosity. You might feel that this is a lot easier than you anticipated, but trust me, it's not. It gets increasingly more complicated as you dive deeper and deeper. 
but so does everything in physics. So what does coefficient of viscosity mean? And what does it do? We know that not every liquid is the same. Each one is different from the other in some way and thus have different properties like the boiling point, the density, the attraction between its molecules and many more, resulting in them having a different viscous force. This viscous force is dependent on the coefficient of viscosity of the liquid. For example, water has a very small coefficient of viscosity and hence flows easily. But on the other hand, engine oil or honey has a greater coefficient of viscosity. So it does not flow as easily as water. But how do we find this coefficient of viscosity? To find the coefficient of viscosity, we can take a look at the formula of viscous force. I will be deriving and explaining this formula in detail in my later videos. But for now, viscous force is equal to eta times area and multiplied by the ratio of velocity between the horizontal fluid layers and the distance between those layers. And just by rephrasing the formula, we can find eta, which happens to be the coefficient of viscosity. So this means that we have to find what force the liquid is moving with the distance between the horizontal fluid layers and divide them by the area of contact between the two layers and the difference in velocity between those two layers. Hence we find the coefficient of viscosity. And this brings us to the end of this video and this series on dimensional formulae. I hope you learned something and if you did then just spread the word, let your friends and classmates know about this channel. This is the High School Scientist signing off.